For the past hour, I've been playing with a brand new plugin from Blue Cat Audio called Acoufiend. It's an acoustic feedback simulator, and if you play electric guitar in the box, I think you should check it out. That's what electric guitar feedback is, if you don't know. <laughs> if you don't know, then I don't know what to tell you, but look. This plugin is a lot of fun. At first, I was like, eh, I don't know if I like it or not, but you really have to tweak the parameters. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to tweak those parameters to get a more natural sound. So, this is what happens when you first load the plugin up. All right. The first question is, where do you load this plugin? And the answer is before the amp simulator plugin, after the tuner after a compressor, if you have one, for your direct box, guitar, whatever. Once you have the plugin loaded in the right spot, you're gonna want to make it as big as your screen is so you can see the controls better. So I'm going to zoom in to, let's see how big that is. Okay, that's good. So 140% for a 1080p screen. And I will show you the controls from left to right, top to bottom. We had the bypass. So if your doll does not have a bypass button, that's the first one. Secondly, we have our input gain control. That's always useful. In the upper part here is the plugin menu. We click that and you can see different presets. Cool, right? You can also see other settings. You can see the user manual, check for updates. So this is like a just a general plugin menu of things. Underneath that, click it for the user manual that comes up. This is the settings menu. This shows the green arrows so you can see where all the controls are. It's useful. And in fact, the control right here isn't actually there if, it, if you don't have the control loaded for some reason. Like if I click this again, see it disappears. The whole MIDI learn thing is gone. I don't know if that's a bug or what, but yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll leave it off for now. Next to that is undo, and then redo is next to that. The I is the about thing, which if I click it, you'll see that this plugin is brand new, year 2020. Very cool. And yes, this is version 1.0. I already showed you the zoom slash GUI scaling button. And yes, it goes all the way up to 200%, which I believe is good enough for 4K. I might be wrong about that, but let's go back to 140. And then to the right of that, we have our show slash hide advanced settings toggle. That'll hide this. Watch. Cool, right? It's even got a little animation. It pops in and out. Good job, Blue Cat. <laughs> to the right of that is the preset menu. You can click that and it'll show all these different presets or on the left side is a left arrow. You can go backwards or forwards with your presets. I clicked the wrong thing. Backwards and forwards with the presets. I'll put it back on default. And then underneath that, <laughs> I never really understood this, but I guess it's just to see, you know, if you have plugins underneath of it, but you can control the opacity of the plugin. So that's pretty neat, I guess. Alt click it to bring it back to the default. To the right of that is a Blue Cat Audio logo, which if you click it, it takes you to their website. In the center top is the dry knob. The dry knob is usually at 100%. I don't think I've ever had it below this and none of the presets have it below 100%. So it's there if you need it. It's there if you want it, but 99 times out of 100, you're not going to touch it. This control over here, though, the wet knob, is something you will mess with because this will control the blend between dry and wet, and it does matter. It makes it sound a lot more natural when you adjust this to the proper setting, whatever you think that may be. Between the dry and wet knobs is the harmonic arrows. Now you can either change this by clicking the arrows 
it goes all the way down to sub and all the way up to fifth harmonic. What does that do? It picks the fundamental frequency or fundamental pitch of your feedback. So just to, instead of me just saying it, let's check it out. Let's go to sub. And by the way, you can also pick it by clicking anywhere except the center. See how my mouse changes to a pointer? So slider up and down. All right. That changes your harmonic setting. Just drag it. I'll put it on sub first. Almost sounds like a ground problem. Second harmonic now. Third. Fourth. Fifth. So that's pretty cool, right? Yeah, this plugin is really all about just listening and the controls are somewhat self-explanatory. Just play with these controls, depending on what your track is, adjust it to taste. Speaking of which, as I said earlier, and if I didn't say earlier, I'm gonna say it now, automation. You really should automate this plugin. Now, your DAW will be different from mine unless you use Reaper, but the way you use it in Reaper is, it's called envelopes. You click that button and you find, this is called trigger. So you select that, and this actually enables and disables the triggering of this plugin. And what I'll do is I'll disable it up to the very end note here. Or maybe even a little bit before. Because a little bit before is not going to hurt. And I'll drag it. Well, let's see what the problem is. Does it tell me? Yes. Okay. So I did it right. So all this throughout the song, the feedback will not happen. It will only happen right at the very end, like I want it to. Let's take a listen. Oops, I didn't like that at all. All right, so I will set it on the first note that I want it to be triggered from. That was easy. Cool. All right. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. No, that's not it. So there's other settings that are very important. First of all, the threshold, which is in the center right here. Threshold is the point at which the feedback will disappear, as the user manual says. Higher numbers keep the feedback going. And by higher, I mean... Okay, technically it's a lower number because it's negative, but, you know, I like to think counterclockwise will hold your sustain, and the lower numbers will get rid of it sooner. This is a parameter that I would probably automate because, to me, it simulates how a guitar player, if they were walking towards their guitar cabinet, would get closer, and therefore the threshold would be lowering, so lowering would be going counterclockwise. Negative 60 for this track is where I thought it sounded best because it disappeared after a little bit. But all my settings are changed because I ran into some issues with this plugin and I don't know if it's because I'm using the VST3 version of it or what, but sometimes it was not passing audio. I'll be submitting a bug report to Blue Cat, absolutely. So I would recommend using VST 2.4 until they fix that problem. All right. So the other important controls, which actually I would say all these are important because it's only a few controls when you think about it. Fade in. This is how long it takes for the feedback to start once the signal is triggered. 
And how do you know that the signal's being triggered? Well, these little things on the side here, I guess these are like speaker grills, they start lighting up. Watch. Pretty obvious, right? So, if I set it to smaller numbers, counterclockwise, it will fade in faster. And if I set it all the way to 100%, it'll be a slow fade in. That's pretty cool, right? That sounded pretty natural, if you ask me. So these parameters make it a little bit easier if for some reason the threshold just wasn't doing it for you. The fade out control, it's pretty simple. But if you don't know what the numbers are, then it's not that simple. But I'm gonna tell you, ready? Now, the way this works is once the signal drops below the threshold, the fade out begins. The higher the number, so the further clockwise it is, the longer the fade out. Let's test it. First with the fade out at 0%, so it's very fast. and then all the way slow. I actually think it ran out of sustain. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think it faded out. I think it just ran out of a note. But anyway, that's those controls. Now attack and pitch over here on the sensitivity section kind of interesting so basically this controls whether or not the trigger will happen depending on how you're playing or how your guitar player is playing i should say the way feedback in the real world works is that it only typically triggers when you have a sustained note so if you all of a sudden change the pitch or you play another note and it hears that you pluck the string, well, that defeats the feedback loop that you created. So the higher the sensitivity on the attack, the faster the feedback will go away once that string is plucked. Low numbers do the opposite. So if you want to defeat the feedback, you have to pluck harder. Pitch is kind of the same thing, but instead of it being about the plucking, it's about the bending or the sliding. It's all about the pitch. If the note pitch changed, then the feedback will be defeated. The lower you have the pitch setting, the slower it will be to the point where if you have it really, really, really low, you can still have feedback going on when you change notes or change pitches or chords as well. All right, finally are our advanced settings, which again can be hidden by clicking this button up here. But I don't see a reason to hide it other than to have some kind of control over visuals or something. I, I don't know. Look, here's the bottom line. This section down here is very cool because you can control it so it only triggers on certain note ranges. And what that means is, it'll control the way it sounds too. Check it out. Oh, let me do a quicker fade in. I'll put it back at 50% approximately. Ow! Let's make that lower, that hurt. But you understand what I'm saying. Like now all of a sudden it's it's just in a certain frequency range. That's pretty cool, right? <laughs> oh, by the way, on my master track, I have loud max. So, yeah. This can be useful. The wider the range, the more CPU you're using. You can also manually type in the notes by double clicking and then typing them here or this one as well. 
I'll type in, I don't know, G6. Like a G6. Transpose. Oh, this is cool. Down here in the bottom right corner, this is where you really can change things easily. This is why I say do not close these settings because you can easily do this. And all of a sudden, or <laughs> be careful though, because you could hear that it was not exactly natural sounding. So what I do is I like to have this wet knob on 20%. So it's blending in with the dry signal. And to me, it just sounds more realistic. And on the original one, we'll bring the harmonic down to second. Pretty cool, right? So, thumbs up from me to Blue Cat Audio. It's been a while since a plugin like this has come out. And the one that I'm thinking of, which I'm not going to mention, <laughs> is still pretty pricey. This new one, although it's not dirt cheap, it's less expensive than the plugin from that other company that's been out for at least since the time that I started doing professional audio engineering, yeah, it's been that long, and this plugin is still on the pricier side, so finally they got some competition, and I don't really remember how that plugin works, but this one right here sounds natural, is easy to use, it's got a scalable GUI, it, you know, I can't say enough good things about it, other than, I don't know, try it out for yourself and see if you like it. And if you do and you find it useful, this is what I say about all the plugins out there. If you, you know, you don't have to have any plugin out there. You know, you, you can use all the free ones. But if this one you think will help your productions, go for it. If not, skip it. I personally like it because you can't create feedback in the box at least not naturally, to my knowledge, because it's not like a real guitar amp. You know what I mean? So, anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. This has been Adam for realhomerecording.com, as per the usual.